Welcome to this fourth edition of Testnet GK. My name is Manish Kane, and today we will be dealing with some current affairs. Now we have been going through your feedback, and we are trying to rework our sessions based on the feedback that we have received from you, and that is why we had to skip the session for that that was scheduled for yesterday. Uh, please keep in mind there is going to be a change in schedule a slight change in schedule probably in the next session that is scheduled for day after tomorrow we shall be having a clearer picture of what the schedule will look like in the next sessions but surely we have incorporated a few suggestions that you've given us and you will see them in the coming sessions in the meantime if you like our sessions please do subscribe to our channel pathfinder for me because you will get immediate information about these sessions as soon as the session are going to be released and we will keep on releasing these sessions till at least 3 to 4 days before the testnet exam okay so here is the first question what is the name of semi high speed railway project envisaged in kerala the correct answer is silver line so what is the objective the objective is to cut the time of travel from 12 hours to 4 hours so from south to north kerala the travel time currently is around 12 hours and the idea of this project is to ensure that this time is brought down to 4 hours so from which two cities between which two cities will this particular line operate it will connect tiruvananthapuram in the south to kasargod the maximum speeds of trains running on this line will be 200 km per hr it's a joint venture between ministry of railways and kerala government so silver line project in kerala next question what is the highest value of a coin that can be issued in india the correct answer is rupees 1000 so according to the indian coinage act 9, uh, 2011 so the highest denomination of a coin that can be minted in india is rupees 1000 currently which coins are in circulation 50 paisa 1 rupee 2 rupee 5 rupee 10 rupee and 20 rupees so the other coins are not in circulation as of now but the <clears throat> if required the mints can mint coins up to a value of rupees 1000 what about bank notes so bank notes currently which are printed in four currency presses located in nashik devas mysore and salboni in the east similarly where are the four mints located mumbai hyderabad kolkata and noida what is the maximum value of a bank note that can be mint, uh, that can be printed rupees 10000 so in the past the following notes have been in circulation rupees 2 5 10 20 50 100 Five hundred thousand, two thousand, even five thousand and ten thousand. These notes were printed at one point of time. So currently, the coins in the the notes in circulation are rupees ten, rupees twenty, rupees fifty, hundred, five hundred and two thousand. These are the current notes in circulation. So rupees ten thousand note was printed once in nineteen thirty eight. It was demonetized in nineteen forty six. so that's the brief about notes and coins in india next which place in india is famous for glass bangle industry the correct answer is the ancient city of chandravar also known as firozabad in modern times so it is situated on the banks of yamuna basically uh, named after firoz shah who was a mansabdar in the <coughs> uh, during the akbar's rule so Firozabad has been named after Firoz Shah and in ancient times Firozabad or Chandravar Chandravar was a part of Surasena Mahajanpad during the Vedic times just for your information next question semi new new land and chumukdima are the newly created districts of which of the following states the correct answer is nagaland next question national elections were held in this country in the year 2021 after 14 years which country is this the correct answer is palestine so the first elections were held in palestine in 
I think the previous elections were held in 2007. Next, who has been appointed as the chief economic advisor of the government of India recently? The current correct answer is V. Ananta Nageshwaran. So he replaced K. V. Subramanyam, who was till uh, recently the chief economic advisor. Ananta Nageshwaran is an alumnus from I am Ahmedabad. He has also done his PhD from uh, University of Massachusetts. Yes. Till recently, he was the dean at IHMR Business School in Chennai. So now, he is taken over as the chief economic advisor to the government of India. Next question. ZED scheme implemented by which is, is a scheme implemented by which ministry? The correct answer here is MSME industry. Now, what does MSME stands for? It should be known to you already. Micro, small and medium enterprises. What does ZED stand for? Zero defect and zero effect. Now, what does that mean? The MSME industry wants to promote a culture among the small and medium enterprises of having zero defects in production. And apart from having zero defects on production, they also want to raise an awareness about zero effect on the environment. And that is why ZED scheme, which stands for zero defect and zero effect. Zero defect in items produced, zero effect on the environment. That is the ZED scheme by MSME. Next, which company has topped the Forbes list of world's best employers in 2021? Now, this company comes up with a variety of lists. Uh, this is a list of most popular or the best employers in 2021. Why would any, any company want to be a best employer? The reason is very simple, to attract good talent. And the con company that was voted as the best employer is Samsung. <clears throat> so who carried out this survey? Forbes and a market research firm called Statista. They created this survey after talking to 1,50,000 people or more who are full or part-time employees of variety of companies. The other companies which had top ranks was IBM, which was ranked second, Microsoft at rank three, Amazon, Apple and Alphabet at rank four, five and six. Alphabet is the parent company of Google. I'm sure many of you know that. Next, which tech giant recently announced its pilot program of adopting 500 villages across Karnataka and Maharashtra? The correct answer is WhatsApp. Now, what is the idea? The idea is to empower villagers with access to digital payments. So basically, these companies want to create a culture of digital payments among villagers. Because unless and until villagers adopt a culture of making digital payments, digital payments will not be fully successful in India. And WhatsApp, as you all know, is also into the domain of digital payments. That is why they come up with a pilot program which empowers villagers with access to digital payment. Now it's a pilot program and what is the name of the pilot program? Digital Payments Utsav. It started on October 15th. So WhatsApp adopting 500 villages under Digital Payments Utsav to empower villages with access to digital payments. Next question. Recently, which Indian festival has been added to UNESCO cultural heritage list for the first time? And this Indian festival is known as Durga Puja in Kolkata. There are around 2500 places where Durga Puja is organized in Kolkata. And Durga Puja in Kolkata is has been recognized by the UNESCO as uh, has been added by the UNESCO to the cultural heritage list. The yoga and the Kumbh Mela have already been added to this list in 2016 and 2017. Incidentally, Kolkata was founded by the East India Company in 1690. Next question. Which web series won the Best Drama Award at the International Emmy Awards in 2021? 
the correct answer is Tehran. Now, Tehran is a web series. It's an Israeli web series. And many Israeli web series have produced on their um, spy operations. Basically, the spy operations of their uh, detective, the spy agency called Mossad. And this story is about a young Mossad agent who has been placed deep undercover in Tehran. So, it is this story about this young Mossad agent. Some of you might have watched the other movie based on Eli Ben Cohen, who was also a deep undercover agent in Syria, who was finally uh, hanged in Syria for going against the Syrian government or for providing intelligence to Israel against the Syrian operations. Next. Which country has stopped the recently released Global Health Security Index? The correct answer is USA. Who else? In fact, India's rank is 66 on this Health Security Index. So what does this Health Security Index measure? This report, it measures a country's ability and capacity to face endemics or epidemics. So, how prepared a country is to face an epidemic, how effectively they will take steps to counter an epidemic. That is, that is what uh, is being gauged through this index. And this report clearly mentions that most countries are underprepared or unprepared for future epidemics. The top countries in that order on this list were USA at number 1, then you have Australia, Finland and Canada at numbers 2, 3 and 4 and so on. Next question. Recently, India joined hands with which of the following countries to create 150 villages of excellence? The correct answer is Israel. Next, which Indian entity recently became the first entity to raise money through Formosa bonds? The correct answer is State Bank of India. I think they have raised 300 million dollars through Formosa bonds. Now, what is Formosa bonds? Bonds that are issued in Taiwan. But denominated in currencies other than the Taiwanese currency. These are Formosa bonds. Formosa is an alternative name for the land of Taiwan. And remember that not every script can be traded. Only a bond that has a that has a rating of triple B or higher can be traded as Formosa. Next, who is the author of recently released book Fearless Governance? The correct answer is Kiran Bedi. Kiran Bedi incidentally was also the first woman IPS in India. She was also the 24th Lieutenant Governor of the Union Territory Puducherry. Next, which company recently launched India's first intelligent messenger called POPS? The correct answer is Paytm. <coughs> now what is the parent company of Paytm known as 197 Communications? Who is the CEO of Paytm? The CEO and the founder of Paytm is Vijay Shekhar Sharma. The CEO of Paytm Money, is, which is also a group company, is Varun Sridhar. Now, what is this intelligent me messenger? What is the purpose of this messenger? So, the purpose is that people may receive specific information about their stocks, uh, the analysis of their portfolio and regarding their portfolio. And Paytm Money has partnered with Investor AI to come up with this intelligent messenger. Next question. Who is the current owner of Air India? The correct answer is Teles Private Limited, which in turn has is owned by Tata Sons. Now, Tata Sons is the holding company which has a majority stake in most um, Tata companies. So, the headquarter of Teles Private Limited is Delhi. And as you are aware, Air India was formerly a company of Tata Group only. Uh, in 1932, Air India started as Tata Airlines for domestic and international travel. But in 1953, nationalization happened and the company was then owned by the government of India till recently. So, the government wanted to sell out this company and Tata Group had made a bid of 18,000 crore and Tata Group won the bid and therefore now Air India is being owned by 
one Tata Group company called Telas Private Limited. Next question. Which of the following awards were not received by Lata Mangeshkar? So obviously the correct answer is Voice of the Millennium. Voice of the Millennium is not an award. It was another name that was attributed to the popular singer. Some of the other names that she had was Queen of Melody, Nightingale of India and obviously Voice of Millennium which she was referred to as. She was born in 1929 in the princely state of Indore which was under British dominion and she was born on 28th September 1929. She expired recently, she died recently as you all know 6th February 2022. She received various awards, many many awards, several filmfare awards but from the governments she has received Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, Bharat Ratna in 1969, 1999 and Bharat Ratna she received in 2001. Then she also received the Dada Sahib Falke Award in 89 and National Order of Legion of Honor of France in 2006. Next, which of the following has been ranked as the most congested city in the world as per Tom Tom's Traffic Index 2021? The correct answer here is Istanbul. So Istanbul has a traffic congestion of 62% and Istanbul is followed by Moscow that is Russia, Kyiv from Ukraine, Bogota in Colombia and our own Mumbai which also has around 53% congestion. Uh, four Indian cities are in the top 21 most congested cities apart from Mumbai which is at the uh, fifth rank. We have Delhi, Bangalore and Pune also in the top 21 cities with most traffic. So Tom Tom's traffic index, it measures traffic situation in 404 cities across 58 countries and it ranks urban congestion. Now what is the meaning of 62% congestion? So if Istanbul has a figure of 62% congestion, it means that if for a particular journey in Istanbul, it takes X minutes of time. With a 62% index, it will take X plus 62% of that much time. So effectively, it will take 62% more time than the normal time required to travel between two places. I don't know how in Mumbai, <laughs> this value is only 53%. So those of you who have lived in Mumbai or Bangalore, uh, would sometimes wonder on these figures. BCCI plans to launch the women's IPL by which year both Jay Shah and Saurav Ganguly. Heavyweights in BCCI, they have confirmed that women's BCCI, uh, women's IPL will be launched by 2023. Already Cricket Australia has a women's Big Bash League in addition to men's Big Bash League. So with this we come to an end of today's edition of current affairs this was the fourth and as i have told you very soon that is by the next session you will get an exact detail of how many sessions more remain and what all dates we are we have made some changes in the dates uh, on which we are going to have these sessions we have made some changes in the dates on which we will be sharing these videos that's all for now thank you very much Please do, do remember to subscribe to Pathfinder for me channel. Thank you.